sequences and series the practice test so if you go to my wiki site and I will put the link with this video um, you can download a copy of this test do it come back and uh, take it up with me or check your answers you can fast forward go to the sections that you felt you had more difficulty with and uh, just make sure that you you've got a little an extra little practice test under your belt so as you can see this test um, my format for giving technical and presentation errors uh, not really important to you but hopefully your teacher will give you these formula to use you should ask before you test if they will be given if not spend a little bit of time memorizing them I don't believe in memorizing equations like that uh, especially ones that you're only going to use a few times in your your mathematical career it's not like you're learning the quadratic formula is it okay so let's take a look at the question part one determine whether each sequence is arithmetic geometric or neither state the common difference or the common ratio and the recursive formula if applicable make sure you read the question um, I'm not sure if your teacher gives a marking scheme I always did I'm not a fan of level marking so I see it's worth seven marks so I'm guessing one of these is not like if I have to do three things that would be like three marks six marks and one mark for one always a good idea if you have a marking scheme to try to plan where the teacher is going to give you the marks Okay, so I look at this first sequence here, 3, 7, 11, 15, and it's quite obvious that I'm adding 4 each time to the previous number. So 3 and 4 are 7, 7 and 4 is 11, blah, 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 right? So I'm going to do just a couple of extra things here as well. I'm going to ask you for the general formula and the recursive. So the general term and the recursive formula. So I know the common difference is D, and I know the first term is A. So A is equal to 3. D is equal to 4, so I've stated the common difference, and um, it's arithmetic, arithmetic. So if I wanted the general term, your teacher might ask you for that, you would use this formula here, right? Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D, so Tn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. And then you would expand and simplify that if that's... And I'm just going to give you the answer to that because it wasn't asked in this question. Uh, so you end up with 4n minus 1 when you simplify that. Now the recursive formula, remember the recursive formula talks about the term number by using the previous one. So the nth term is the previous term plus 4. So that's what you have to say to yourself when you're doing recursive formulas. This term is the previous one. It's always the one before. What did I do to the previous term? I added 4. Now you also have to say that n is greater than 1. And you have to say that the first term is equal to 3. And that n is an element of natural numbers. Okay, so that would be... So for this, you would get one mark for the common difference, one for the recursive formula, or maybe two for the recursive formulas because you needed to know all of, you have to state all of these three things. Okay, letter B, 2, 4, 8, 16. Well, each one is multiplied by the previous term, right? So I'm multiplying by 2. That means it's geometric. The common ratio is 4 divided by 2, or 8 divided by 4, or 16 divided by 8, which is obviously 2. So A is equal to 2, and the common ratio, R this time, is going to be 2 as well. So I'm multiplying by 2. The general term would be Tn equals A times R to the N minus 1, because it's geometric. So even if your teacher gives you these formulas, you need to know which one to use, right? So obviously this is your arithmetic, this is your geometric, this one, this would be arithmetic sequence, an arithmetic sequence, and because this one has a power, that means it's geometric. So two arithmetic ones and a geometric. Make sure you understand or know which one is which. Okay, so the recursive formula would be 
What did I do to the previous term to get the next term? What did I do to this term to get this one? Oh, I just did two times it, right? Two, tn minus one. The geometrics are always really easy to write the recursive formulas for. The first term is two, and again, n is an element of natural numbers. Okay, so the third one, a half, two quarters, three eighths. If you did any patterning, you probably would recognize that I'm adding one to the top and I'm multiplying the bottom by two. So this is neither arithmetic or geometric because it doesn't have a common difference or a common ratio. Number two, determine the first three terms of each sequence. Identify the type of sequence. Okay, so the first three terms. So when t is 1, t1 is going to be 13 plus 3 times 1. That's all. And I'm going to write that right across this way. So that's going to give me 16. t2 would be 13 plus 3 times 2. This is just like plugging and jugging here, right? That'll be 19. t3, 13 plus 3 times 3. That's 13 and 9 is 22. What type of sequence is this? Well, what am I doing? I'm adding 3 each time, right? This is like a plus n minus 1 times d kind of equation. So this would be arithmetic. Okay, the second one, tn, n times n plus 2. So when n is 1, I plug in 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 plus 2. 2 times 4 is 8. T3, that would be 3 times 3 plus 2. 3 times 5 is 15. Now, is there a common ratio or a common difference here? So if I looked at the addition part, I'd say, well, I added 5, then I added 7. Hmm, that's not, that's not arithmetic. And if I did 8 divided by 3, is that the same thing as 15 divided by 8? Well, you might you might want to check. So 8 divided by 3, that's 2.666. And 15 divided by 8, uh, that's 1.875. So obviously, this is neither. It has a pattern, but it doesn't have. So like I'm adding 5, then I added 7. You could probably guess you'd add 9 to the next one, and so on. Okay, the last question on the first page, using one of the above formula, determine the eighth term of the following sequence, 6, 17, 28. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is determine whether or not it's arithmetic or geometric. So to go from 6 to 17, I added 11. 17 to 28, I added 11. So that means it's going to be arithmetic. So the eighth term of the sequence, I'm going to use my formula Tn equals A plus n minus 1 times d. Write out your formula. Always a good idea. Then you can identify the different parts. So I know a is 6. I know the n here is going to be 8 because they're asking for the 8th term. And the common difference I already determined was 11. Just plug it in to find the 8th term. So the 8th term is going to be equal to a, that's 6, plus 8 minus 1 times 11. So that's 11 times 7 is 77 and 6 gives me 83. Pretty easy. So this is kind of like your level 1 questions, right? Okay, second question, or number 4. Using one of the above formula, determine the tenth term of the following sequence. So I have 1, then I have 4, then I have 16. 1, 4, 16. So I add 3, I add 14, it's not arithmetic. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. So I know that it's going to be geometric. The tenth term, so my formula is Tn equals A times R to the N minus 1 as the exponent. Okay, be careful about those N minus 1s. Remember the sequence and, and series, the N minus 1 was an exponent for the sequence. So for this one, I have to figure out, first of all, I need to know what is what is n. 
the tenth term. So I want to find n is going to be 10, my a is going to be 1, and my ratio is 4 divided by 1, or 16 divided by 4, is 4. So the tenth term, t, whoops, why did I write an 8? t10, let's just write it over here, t10 equals 1 times r, which is 4, to the power of 10 minus 1. So that's going to be 4 to the power of 9. And if you did that on your calculator, you got 2, 6, 2, 1, 4, 4. Okay? Hopefully you know how to do that on your calculator. Remember, it would be like 4 to the power of 9. That's that little arrow. And there you go. Number 5. Determine the sum of the 30 terms of this series. So the sum, sum means I'm going to use one of those S formulas. We could go back here for a second. And oh, first of all, let's decide what type of series it is. So the sequence went 11 to 19. So I added 8. I added 8. Oh, I know it's arithmetic. The sum of the 30 terms. So I have a choice of these two formulas for sum, but I don't know what the 30th term is. So I'm not going to use this one. Right? I'm not going to use this one. I'm only going to use this one. So write out your formula. So I have S n equals n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so now I need to go to the series and figure out all the different things that I know. I know that a is equal to 11. I know that n is going to be 30 because I'm finding the 30th term. And I know what d is. d is equal to 8. So now all you have to do is plug that in. How easy is this? So the sum of 30 terms is going to be 30 divided by 2 times 2 times 11 plus 30 minus 1 times d, which is 8. So that's going to give me 15 times, what's that, 22, and 29 times 8. Ooh, 29 times 8 is 232. And you would need a calculator to figure that out. And I know the answer is 3810. Okay, number six, determine the sum of the first 20 terms of this series. So because your teacher just gave you an arithmetic one, you can be darn sure the next one isn't going to be the same. And if you look, 10, 5, 2 and a half. Now remember to do your ratios this one over this one. Don't say, oh, it's two. It's not two. It's five divided by 10 is a half. Two and a half divided by five is a half. So my R common ratio is going to be one half. My A is 10. And if you go to the first page and you look for a good formula, you were only given one for geometric, R to N minus one, over r minus 1. So now I plug in everything I know. So I'm trying to find the sum of 20 terms. So that's going to be a times r, which is a half, to the power of, I'm going to need two sets of brackets here because I want to raise this to the 20th power, a half to the power of 20, then subtract 1. Okay, be careful to make sure you do that first. And then divided by r minus 1, um, so that's a half minus one. Okay, I'm not going to do all the calculations for that. It should come out to approximately 20. Okay, number seven. For an arithmetic series, the first term is two and the tenth term is 29. Find the sum of the first ten terms using the appropriate formula. So they're telling you it's arithmetic. You have the first term and the tenth term, and you're finding the sum of the ten terms. So if you go to arithmetic here, you know the first term and the last one. So you don't need to do this more complicated formula. You can use this one. So I'm going to say the sum of ten terms is going to be equal to, so I'm going to use, um, let me write out the formula here just so you remember, Sn equals n times t1 plus tn 
divided by 2. So the first one and the last one, this was like the Gaussian method, right? Okay, so sum of 10 terms is going to be 10 times the first term is 2. The tenth term is 29. And I'm going to divide by 2. So that's the same as 5 times 31. I did divide, I did this in case you were wondering. So 5 times 31 is 5 and 15. 155. Okay, so um, my test didn't have one question that yours did, so I, I wrote it out here on the back. It says calculate the sum of the geometric series. So this time I have a geometric series and I need to figure out, so I have, I have the first one and the last one, right? So I have first and last, and I'm going to, um, I need to know what A is. And the problem is with this one, I don't know what this number is for this last term, right? So if I wrote out the sequence formula, I'd have A times R to the N minus one, over r minus 1. So I want the sum of this, but I don't know how many terms there are. Now you could probably figure this out in your head if you were in a pinch and couldn't remember how to do it, but I doubt your teacher would give you full marks because if you go, if you look at what's happening here, this is we're multiplying by minus a half. So minus a half, minus 1 times minus a half, that would be, that would give you a half in here and then minus a quarter and then one eighth. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh term, right? So um, probably your teacher wouldn't give you one that's so close to this one because that would just make it too easy because you could do it without using formula. So let's do it the way, let's say you don't know and you need to know what the term number is of this one eighth. So I'm gonna write it out like this and I'm going to solve for n here. So I know my nth term, this is tn, right? I just don't know what number it is in my sequence. I know it's the nth term. So I'll say, well, 1 eighth is eight times r. We said r was minus 1 half. Remember, all you have to do is put this term over this one, or this one over this one, or this one over this one. So I have minus 1 half to the n minus one. Now I have to solve for n, and this is often something people find a little tricky. So the first thing I had to do is divide by eight here. So if you divide by eight and divide this by eight, you would get one over 64. And then I have minus a half to the n minus one. And I know that one over 64, I want to have the same base here. So this is the same as a half to the power of six. And this is still minus a half to the power of n minus one. Now, I know you probably say, well, these are different. So how can I equate the exponents? Well, you can knowing that if you solved for the exponent here, you would get n equals seven. And that means that when I raise this a half to an even power, I would get the same, I would get a positive answer. So your answer is seven. You could have gotten it that way. And now you're going to use the sum of seven terms here to solve for the sum of the series. So I have a times r, which is minus a half to the n, which is seven minus one over minus a half minus one, you can do this on your calculator, you'll get 5.375, okay? Okay, number eight, draw Pascal's triangle to the sixth level or the fifth exponent and use it to expand and simplify the following binomial. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my triangle way over here so I have lots of room. So remember one, and remember there's like magic zeros here. So I add these two together and I get one. I add these two together, I get another one. So if you put the zeros in, it seems to make more sense. At least it does to me. So zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. And one plus zero is one. So that's zero, one, two. And remember, as you go down, 
0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 2 is 3, 2 and 1 is 3, 1 and 0 is 1. Put a little 0 here just to help you out. 0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 3 is 4, 3 and 3 is 6, 3 and 1 is 4, 1 and 0 is 1. I go one more, two more times, right? I need um, to the sixth level or the fifth exponent. Okay, one more. 0 and 1 is 1. 1 and 4 is 5, 6 and 4 is 10, 6 and 4 is 10, 4 and 1 is 5, and 0. There we go. So we've got this all written out, and now I want to expand this binomial to the fourth power. So the fourth power means this row, right? Whatever this number is here, this is the first, this is a 0 power. The first power, the second power, third power, fourth power. So I'm going to expand this one and I'm going to do it very carefully for you here. We're going to write it all out. So first thing we want to do again is write out these special numbers. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Leave plenty of room in between. So I'm going to write 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay, so once you've written that down, now you go to your first term. So that's 3x. So I write 3x to the power of 4. And I reduce that exponent as I go from left to right. Make sure the exponent is outside the brackets because you have to apply the exponent to the 3. So you don't want to just write 3x cubed here. It's 27x cubed when you expand it, right? So now I have 3x squared, 3x to the power of 1 and then 3x to the 0, which is 1. Now I come back the other way with my um, second term, which is minus 2y. So I have minus 2y to the power of 4, minus 2y to the power of 3. Oh, I didn't leave quite enough room. Minus 2y to the power of 2, minus 2y to the power of 1, and minus 2y to the power of 0. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in the plus signs in between. Don't forget these things are not just all multiplied together. You need plus signs. I've seen that mistake many times. Okay, so for each of these terms now I need to expand. So as I expand them, I'm going to write them down. I'm going to do another line before I, I simplify. So 3x to the power 4, that's x to the power 4, and 3 to the power 4 is 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81 x to the fourths. Plus, now I have 4 times, expand this one, 3x cubed. Don't try to do it all in your head. You're sure to make some silly mistake somewhere. So 3 cubed is 27, and I have x cubed times minus 2y. And then I have 6 times 3x, oh, 3x squared, that's 9x squared. And minus 2y squared is 4y squared. And then I have, oh, I'm really going to run out of room, aren't I? I'm going to simplify this little one first. So I have 12x just to save a bit of room. And minus 2y cubed, a negative to a third power is going to be negative. So I have negative 8y cubed. Remember, these are all multiplied, these little ones, right? So don't, don't forget this bracket or it means something totally different. And minus 2 to the power of 4, that's going to be 16y to the fourth. Okay, so I still have just a little bit more work here to do, just simplifying these last ones. So I have a positive, positive, and a negative. So my answer is going to be negative. And um, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 27. Oh, I better do that in calculator so we can do it faster. 8 times, oops, error, quit. 8 times 27 is 216. So it's minus 216. Now watch your variables. So I have an x cubed and a y. The next one, they're all positive. So I'm going to add. And I have 9 times 6 is 54. 54 times 4 is 216. You should be able to do that in your head, right? x squared, y squared. And the next one here, I have 12 times negative 8. That's going to be negative 96. x, y cubed. 
and 16y to the fourth, and you're done. Okay, so um, you should note as well, when you're done here, to double check some things, the exponents should add up to four. So four, three and one is four, two and two is four, three and one is four, and four. And they go from positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, because I had a negative here in my, uh, my binomial that I'm expanding. Okay. Number nine, a sweepstake has $4 million in prizes. The first ticket draw, drawn wins 15, second drawn wins 45. So I have, a, I have a sequence here. So I have 15, and then I have 45. The third ticket wins 135. And they want to know how much money would be paid out if 12 prizes were to be awarded. They're not asking you what the 12th prize is. They want to know if you paid out all 12 prizes. So they want to know the sum of these. How much did you give out? So this is just really um, a simple um, series where we're adding a, a geometric series, right? Because I'm multiplying by 3. So R is going to be equal to 3. A is equal to 15. And I want the sum of 12. Okay, so sum of 12, you're going to use geometric. So if you go back to your little formula sheet here, I want geometric. I want this formula right here. So I'm going to write that out. Sn equals A times R to the power of N. Subtract 1. Be careful with that minus 1 over R minus 1. All you have to do is plug it all in. So the sum of 12 is going to be equal to 15 times 3 to the power of 12 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. And if you do that, uh, let me see what was my answer, 3, 9, 8, 5, Three million nine hundred and eighty-five dollars and eight hundred more. There you go. How much money would be left over after paying out all twelve prizes? Well, that was a pretty silly question. I don't know who asked that. All you have to do is subtract them, right? Four million. Four million minus three thousand nine hundred. Three million nine eighty-five eight hundred. And that comes out to fourteen thousand two hundred. I think a better question would have been, how much would the 12th prize be? Find T12. You could do that. It would be kind of fun, but I know you won't. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We have a couple more questions here to do, and then we're done. In a triangular pile of logs, the top row contains two logs. Um, I'm not sure if you had a picture with yours, but this is kind of what it would have looked like if you had. Each row below the top row contains one log more than the row above. If the bottom row has 21 logs, how many logs are in the pile? You must use a proper formula. Well, isn't that funny? Teacher is going to make you use a formula. Okay, so let's see what we're dealing with here. Top row has two, so we start with two. Each row below contains one log more. And we want to know how many logs are in the pile. We don't want to know how many logs are in the bottom pile. We already have that. So we're adding, we're adding these together. Whoops, 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 dot 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 plus 21. We know the last term has 21 logs. We don't know what term number this is though, right? That's, that's the trick. You don't know the number of the log. You're going to have to you're going to have to calculate that. So um, let's find the bottom row has 21. It is arithmetic, right? I'm adding one at a time. So this is my nth term, and I want to know what number is this? What is n? So then I can find the sum of them. So if the first one is a is a is two, and common difference is 1 and I want to find n. So using your formula for, let me just find that one here, for your arithmetic, tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to write that out, tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. 
Sorry about the lighting here. The sun is actually shining, which is kind of nice, but it doesn't make for a good display. Okay, so I want to know the bottom row has 21, so 21 logs. If I started with two and I'm adding one at a time, so my D is only one here. So 21 equals 2 plus n minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. I bring it over here. I subtract. That means it's n is 20. Now you probably could have figured that out just by looking. If this is the first term is 2 and the second term is 3 and the third term is 4, then, then this has to be the 20th term. But we did it the good way. We showed proper formula. So now I want to find the sum of these 20 terms. So I know the first term and the last one, so I would probably choose this one. n times t1, so this is going to be 20 times the first term, which is 2, plus the last term, which is 21, and I'm going to divide by 2. So the 2 goes into 20 10 times, so it's going to be 10 times 23, which is 230. So 230 logs in the whole pile. Okay, the last question. I did this in uh, one of your, your homework exercises. Not a homework exercise, but one of your other videos where we were asked to figure out how many, um, how far had the ball bounced if it starts at a height of 6.4 meters and it bounces, how many times do they say, after seven. Okay, so it's going to bounce seven times. So remember that if you start from this height, 6.4, all these other ones, you're going to have double this distance, right? So it says 6.4, we start at 6.4, and it's going to rebound to 60%. So the next height is going to be 3.84. And we can continue on multiplying by 0.6 each time. This height here is going to be 2.304 and so on. So basically you could do seven of these and add them up and figure out how far the ball went. Or you're supposed to use a proper formula for full marks. So. We know it's geometric because we're multiplying by 0.6. So our R is 0.6. Our A is going to be 6.4. And we want the ball to bounce seven times. So we're going to use our geometric, uh, geometric sequence formula. So that's going to be Sn equals A times R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. So we're going to plug everything in. So A is going to be 6.4, R is 0 0.6, N is 7, then subtract 1, divided by 0 0.6 minus 1. So get out your trusty calculator, and you're going to do 6.4 times, uh, well, we're going to need a couple of brackets here. I'm going to do it separately. I like to like do 0 0.6 to the power of, whoops. 0.6 to the power of 7. I can't see because the light's so bad. And I did it twice. 0.6 to the power of 7. That gives me 0.027936. I'm going to subtract 1. And I'm just going to write that here for you in case you can't see the screen. I can barely see it myself. Minus 0.9720064. Move this up and 0 0.6 minus 1 is minus 0.4, right? 0 0.6 minus 1 minus 0.4. Okay, so let's go back to um, this line here. So I'm going to do 6.4 times. This isn't the most efficient way to do this, obviously. 264, and I'm dividing it by minus 0.4, and I get 15 approximately 15.55. Now remember with this question though, this is not the total distance traveled. It's not, right? It's only, this is half of it because I'm just adding this, this, this. 
not as adding these double like it bounced it went down came back up to that height and down so I need twice that so the total distance total distance traveled is going to be 15.55 times 2 and you remember what you have to do after you do that hope you remember that you needed to subtract one of these 6.4s because it was dropped from this height so this one didn't have this other other side here right so minus 6.4 and that's going to be your answer let's multiply this by 2 and minus 6.4 and I get uh, about 24.7 approximately 24.7 and those are meters and there you go there's your practice test um, I don't think this was the hardest test that I've ever given you might want to look back and try to find some that some of your homework questions that involved maybe something a little trickier that you did in class just to make sure you can polish that up okay everybody that's the end of chapter seven one more to go and we're done the course hang in there you can do it and again if you would like me to do the advanced functions for you next year please let me know bye